Welcome to the Live Explore podcast. If you like what you hear, please hit like and subscribe. Back to our guest today for the, our very, our second, I should have just gone, I was going to, our very second pod, uh, <laughs> podcast um, for Beer Golf Girl Travels. We've got Dave McLean from Admiral Maltine out in Alameda, who has a further history back than that, but we're going to start with there. And uh, Alex Whitehurst, who is the head brewer over at the New Hen House West County Pub in Fairfax, California, in Marin mm-hmm. County. Um, pretty exciting. And uh, that is about to open, right? It just opened. It did just yeah, open. Yeah, just opened last week. Very cool. Mm-hmm. So exciting. And then how long have you been with Hen House? I've been with Hen House for a little over three years. Okay. Like almost three and a half. Um, Learning your craft there. But you also <clears throat> went to UC Davis as well as... Seems like we both did, yes. So yeah, alumni yeah, yeah. of the the UC Davis, uh, what are they? What are the the Brewmaster program? Uh, they call it the Master, Master Brewers program. program. Master Brewers yeah. program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. So when did now? Were you? Did you go when Michael Lewis was still teaching? I did. Yeah. How, uh, how fun was that? <laughs> it was great. I mean, I didn't. And Charlie. I, so I was there before Charlie. Wow. Oh. Still just Lewis. <laughs> okay. And um, it was the 93, 94 school year. Wow. At Very that time, cool. it was it's went the whole school year. I think oh. it has since become condensed. Yeah, when I was there, um, I was there in 2013, mm-hmm. and yeah, it was it was five months, six months, just all day, every day. Yeah, I think that yeah. I, I think they've realized that it was hard to get people to give up. The people that had already been out of college come back and give up a whole school year. Of right. So Plus the cost. <laughs> they found, they, yeah, they found a way to sh- make it all yeah, very condensed. Like, yeah. yeah. It need to give you some time to make some money to pay for the program as well. <laughs> right. Well, I've actually got a Hen House, their newest beer, in my hand right now. Um, well, one of their newest beers, because mm-hmm. you actually brought a, a collaboration as well. But this is the Pride Pours West Coast Session IPA uh, brewed with Eldorado, Talus, and uh, Autonum. Autonum. A ton of hops. A ton of, yeah. Ah, that's one I don't know yet. So, and that is from Hen House. So we're gonna. I'm gonna crack that open. They're way ahead of me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Yeah, Let's see if I beard in front of me. Break a yeah. nail on air. There we go. <laughs> All right. You gotta love that sound. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you for joining me. I come yeah, down yeah, in San Cheers. Francisco yeah. traffic, and. Did you come down from Fairfax or Petaluma? I was in Fairfax today, but I mm. live in Petaluma, so I just oh, walked tasty. on your way home. Yeah. Nice. That is super tasty. All right. Good. So the reason why we have a hen house guy and an Admiral Maltese guy is you guys are doing something pretty exciting together. So Admiral Maltese, let's, let's do a little quick history there. So you actually were at Magnolia Brewing. You you founded Magnolia Brewing in the Haight-Ashbury. Super freaking cool place. Awesome. And then you and Ron Silberstein from Thirsty Bear started um, Admiral Maltine. And uh, what year was that? That was like five years ago now? Yeah, 2017. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we, um, there, we have a third partner, Curtis Davenport, who we connected mm-hmm. with a couple years before that. And um, it took, a, like, just like starting a brewery, it took a while. So we were working on it for a couple years. But What we, was the impetus to get that? Well, for the for two of us, for Ron and I, we were you know having um, both having breweries in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, we just found ourselves wishing that we had access to locally grown, locally malted grain. Um, we both were brewing a lot of English style beers and beers with right. and some German style beers, but pretty much beers that had imported malt. Um, and the, you know, after fifteen twenty years mm-hmm. thinking, uh, doing the math on how much. You know, how much malt was brought over an ocean and a continent on our behalf for our breweries you yeah. know, was kind of a drag. And this is, the you know, such a, um, a cradle of agriculture in this country, uh, the California, you know, Central Valley, Sacramento right. Valley. So we mm-hmm. thought, why why can't we have local malt here? Uh, and then Curtis, our third partner, came out of more from a, a, a organic and sustainable farming background. Thirsty Bear was all organic. The, 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 the beers, the beers all were organic, all organic, yeah. right? Yeah. So that Ron was doing also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I remember all your British style beers you were doing at Magnolia. So and they were all made with Maris Otter malt, which mm-hmm. is an amazing malt, but it is from many thousands of miles away. Yeah. Quite a ways. Yeah. Yeah. So that was smart. Just in time when the gas prices went up and a pandemic started. So that was smart, actually, that you guys started that. <laughs> yeah, so it was a mixed bag. Pandemic think, was a mixed bag. Actually, yeah, sure. right. In some ways, it's kind of interesting because. Everybody else was having shipping issues, but then here you guys had started something that was right here. Did yeah. that? It 
That was so that to take off from that. The big picture version of that is that was a great lesson in why one is, should support local and, mm-hmm. and and make sure their supply chains are as local as they can and as resilient as they can because people couldn't get their overseas malt. Um, we had many people calling; couldn't, they couldn't get their German malt or their British malt. Containers were in the wrong parts of the world, right? Yeah. They were having trouble just or or, st- or, or in one spot or and not going, yeah. right. not going anywhere. So yeah, we had a lot of inquiries at, at, during that time. We just couldn't take advantage of it because we were already at capacity. We had hit pause because of the pandemic on our expansion, mm-hmm. and so then we were kind of caught, unable to kind of scoop up the extra business that would have come from all those people that couldn't get their imported malt. Um, so we didn't benefit as much as we could have, but. Um, I think it was a great lesson, and like, this is why we should have uh, more, you know, sh- tighter, shorter supply chains for things like malt pops, sure. whatever. Well, and I, I would imagine that that hadn't, that that wouldn't subside after things got released again, and and it got easier to get their grain. I would imagine that people were still. Yeah, calling to try and be as, as local as possible. Yeah, I think some people took that as a lesson and mm-hmm. and made maybe rethought some of their sourcing. So it did help us in the long run. Nice. We just weren't able to capture <laughs> well, all of that sure, at that right time. Now. But uh, but yeah, I think it set some wheels in motion for hopefully that helps all craft maltsters and other uh, local regional beer suppliers. And the mm-hmm. relationships also your closer relationships like you know are, are in a tighter circle. Um, you know, you're getting to do more face to face. You know, you can go. Do you do you ever go out to, you know, uh, over out? Yeah, yeah sure, and go yeah. chew some malt out of you know and yeah, taste definitely. it. And how cool is that? You know, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's great. I mean, being able to be face to face with a, a maltster and going and actually like checking out the process and and looking at and tasting the mm-hmm. the uh, raw materials. It's it's awesome to just drive you know a couple hours and. Yeah, I mean, I, I, in my time at Magnolia, I wish there had been an admiral uh, to yep. to go to like that. And you know, and even upstream from that, you know, we're the a bigger part of our whole vision is to connect uh, brewers and distillers with the farmers too. So right, that's right, because you're doing for distilling as well. Too. Yeah, but yeah. we didn't. Yeah, I don't we think like anybody like from Henhouse made it, but uh, uh, this time. But you know, we we invited as many brewers as we could get to come out to uh, one of our farmers' fields a few weeks oh, ago. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fun. And, yeah, yeah, I was trying to get to that, and it just production in Fairfax was a it was bit much. I'm sure <laughs> that's true for most. We did, we you know we we got twenty or thirty folks that turned oh, nice. out, and it was great. And for almost all of them, it was the first time they had set foot in a field of barley. Um, just like for that is pretty great. You wow. know, the, when when we were starting Admiral, that was the first time I set foot in a field of barley. And so, as a brewer that works with this, you know, the main agricultural ingredient in beer. Uh, I think I saw people have like those epiphany moments in the fields, Certainly, like yeah. like holy, no, holy <laughs> shit! I'm standing in a field of barley, you know, and uh, yeah. So like that's like to be able to, and not just standing in a field of barley, but also talking to two of the farmers, the you know uh, father son farm mm-hmm. duo, um, being able to just talk to them and hear what their struggles are like here, how they approach growing uh, malting barley, like to be able to connect brewers and, and farmers is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. and that's a, a perspective Back to that the relationships. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's certainly like a, a perspective that you don't generally get and i'm sure that they were pretty stoked to have the brewers there as well like i imagine that uh, without that direct connection you're just kind of like making this product and then sending it away and then other people are doing other things with it and you don't really like yeah sure especially grain grain is often a commodity it just gets scooped up by you know right i mean i guess there might have been a few beers tested in the field that <laughs> came from the grain. Some of the so how often does that come back to yeah. them, right? Yes. From, yeah. Those, our farmer, full circle. Uh, yeah, yeah, Bob and his son Stephen got to drink beers made with uh, malt, made from malt, made from uh, barley that they grew. You know, and so they also kind of had a you know an epiphany moment where they got to enjoy like the final re- uh, the final output of what they did. That's so, really yeah, cool. yeah, that's awesome. That's super cool. And then, so I've actually been over to um, the facility, Admiral Walton. There's also a pub there called the Rake, the Rake is which I've been to, the, of course, the one in the pub, the Rake pub in England. There's at, a great at Rake the pub. Market. Yes. I, I, I also love that pub. I love that pub. Those we guys. felt a little bad about using that name, but it's it, it is one of the most iconic mm-hmm. tools that a molster uses or floor Certainly, molster yeah. uses. That's yeah. how you turn right. the malt on the floor. You rake it. So I think Mike and Richard would think it's super cool. They would probably. I think so. I think I, so too. I think it was so. all meant in, in yeah. out of respect. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. But it's a yeah. It's a. It's iconic. It's one of the only. I th- we think it may be the only pub in the world that looks out over a malting floor or a malting facility of any kind. 
And, I don't, uh, I'm on Facebook a lot. I haven't seen any <laughs> anybody else post. I'm always happy like to be that. proven wrong, but <laughs> as far as we can yeah. tell, uh, yeah, I don't I think there's seen, another one. No, so. I haven't seen. I would have seen it. I probably would have seen it. <laughs> so that really brings malting to the public too, which is right. something where m- the public in the beer world doesn't really interact with malt much or to hear much about malt. It's yeah. a it's a hop driven beer culture right now. Right. And, uh, and I'm a, I love malt. I love malty beers. That's why I love the British beers, like mm. and mm-hmm. and just rich and you know the the smell when you walk into the you know the floor you know malt facility there at depending on what's happening you know different smells from the grain whether it's roasting or where it's on the floor and they're they're, they're going around with the rake mm-hmm. it's hard to explain but i will put some pictures up because i do have some great pictures of <coughs> you and the facility and people pulling through um you know this show yeah. probably won't be as much of a geek alert as I had for the live broadcast show where mm-hmm. people were sitting in the cars or, you know, they might have been at work and they didn't know about Maltude. But I believe this is the first floor, mal- I thought it was the first floor Maltine um, company, new one, set in America since the 40s. But I think there you had a better way of looking at it. Well, yeah, I think, so we're, you know, we're part of a craft malting movement, right? And there are now over 50 craft malsters in the U.S. and I think over 65 if you cool. include Canada. Uh, and there were some folks that got started before us that have done some floor malting or do floor malting. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think the, the statement we're comfortable <laughs> saying is that uh, we're certainly the first floor malting in California since Prohibition. Let's see, and that's, that'll, I mean, look at all of our breweries. How, how incredible is that? That's and great. Yeah, we're the state with the most number of craft breweries in the country. Yes, and yet, great. only yeah. so far, only one uh, Molster. Well, cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There is room for more. Yes. <laughs> sure. Well, and considering how many uh, vehicles we have on the road, you know, gas and emissions and things like that, this is, you know, that would be bringing stuff from other places is kind of nice that we're still, you know, you're keeping it within the state. How many breweries do you think approximately are using your malt now? We've definitely sold to over 350 or 400. Um, now, they don't all buy consistently or regularly. Some do, and then some buy more for seasonal beers or certain, you know, just they have a beer in mind that they always like to make with our malt. But, mm-hmm. um, Which comes to why you're here. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that, that alone would be more than a third of the breweries in California. That's that have cool. at least one spot our malt. So, so, so that, yeah. all, all, all around, not only is it helping the breweries and the carbon footprint and family farmers and local farmers. I mean, there's so many aspects to this and, you know, fresh beer. Well, I think that that's the greatest segue into a hen house <laughs> conversation here because the hen house is famous famous for its its commitment the, to freshness the on the beer side. Yeah, and the you know, as, my favorite beer as fresh as possible. Yeah. Right, and you know, one of the things that none of us e- e- realized even when we were starting out, Merle, is the, the the difference that freshly kilned malt makes. Um, Certainly, you know, we we didn't know because it's, it was never advertised to us as brewers, and we, it was never talked about because it wasn't possible to get freshly killed malt mm-hmm. because we were getting malt from far away. So yeah, shipping from other countries. <laughs> yeah, so we had our minds blown. Like the the smell of malt coming out of the kiln, <laughs> right? And it goes into the bag, and even just um, even days or weeks later, cutting open a bag and 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 like the smell when it hits hot water in the mash tun. Mm. It's it's yeah, that's great. There's a freshly killed uh, set of flavors and aromas that are unmatchable. And um, it's just like coffee roasting where, mm-hmm. you know, they're volatile heat-derived compounds that, that, that are finite and they go away yeah. and, with time. They just dissipate. And, um, you know, the sooner, the closer to when that malt was kilned you use it, um, the, the more you capture and retain some of that freshly kilned flavor and aroma in the beer. Oh. So, you know, to work with somebody like Henhouse is cool because they're all about freshness on the output side with the beer. But S- Certainly, yeah. You guys definitely walk the talk, like with the festival. Um, oh, yeah. Which is uh, uh, one of my favorite fe- uh, festivals, they, the beer festivals. They just had it. No <laughs> beer is older than seven days. Seven days, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and there have only been a handful of people that we've had to turn away from that they they showed up with eight or nine day beer and we had to say ah, sorry yeah maybe it's next rule, time rules yeah. rules yeah. <laughs> um so yeah. t- so let's talk about like the, the collaboration that you guys are doing and then i want to talk about a little bit about outside lands because you're curating uh the upcoming outside lands but i believe the beer is part of that that you guys are doing together so tell us about um what hen house and Admiral malting are doing uh, and the west county pub sure yeah okay. yeah yeah, so it's um, being brewed there uh, tomorrow, actually. 
um, cool. and we're making a California Common, and mm-hmm. it's uh, 100% added rum malt, and uh, also known as a steam beer, right? Uh, yes, yeah, mm-hmm. also known as steam beer. Funny, we just had Mark <coughs> Carpenter in for the first of the of the Beer Golf Girl Travels podcast, mm-hmm. and of course we were ta- he was telling the whole, the whole history with uh, the steam beer, which was. He would know it better than most. Coming from <laughs> yeah, Mark certainly. Carpenter yes. was so cool. He said he'll come in again um, too. So we'll nice. That'd yeah, be fun. yeah. So t- so okay. So you're doing a California Common with that real malt. So what kind of malt are you doing for that? Um, that is, well, let's see. We are using what Feldbloom, and uh, uh, we're doing Pacific Victor. Pacific Victor, uh, Kilnsmith. And a little bit and of... And a bit of chit malt. Yep. Yeah. And um, Admiral's Hearth. A little Hearth, I think, yeah. Yeah. Right. It's it's a pretty wide array of... of That's a nice cross-section of our malts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of all yeah. things Admiral. Yeah. So there's actually a few names there I haven't I haven't even heard before. So are you actually coming up with some of your own malt, malt styles or malt... I don't know. If that... Yeah, well, I mean, that's... We I, heard make... a, I heard of Admiral Hearth. Is that... We make, um, you know, 14 different malts at the moment. Um, uh-huh. That's, I guess in the beginning it was still maybe only 10, and then we've added a few over the last five years. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're, you know, the way it works is we're, you know, we're taking in a couple different varieties of barley from the farms, and then we can turn those into any number of malt styles, right? So, you know, what one particular variety might end up becoming Admiral Pils, or Pilsner malt, and uh, maybe... Um, Gallagher's Best, our our uh, British influence, kind of Maris Otter influence, Paleo oh, malt, okay. um, and then we, you know, the, the so-called higher kiln malts that they get a little more temperature in the kiln, um, that are commonly th- known as you know Vienna malts and, mm. and Munich malts. Um, our Pacific Victor is our version of a Vienna malt. Our uh, okay. Admiral's Hearth is our darker of our two Munich style malts. So yeah, we're you know we make a range of malts out of the same mm-hmm. barley's. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, it kind of depends on what the what the end product you want mm-hmm. to be. Yeah, that's the, if there's a recipe in malting, it's the kiln profile, right? So we steep. Kind of like with coffee. Yeah, you yeah. steep the grain and germinate it, and those are that process is fairly consistent uh, from from malt style to malt style. And then and, and then once it goes into the kiln, that's kind of where a, a recipe is applied with, by manipulating time, temperature, and humidity to coax out a, a range of flavor, color, and aroma. Amazing. So now... Are you actually helping with brewing with this as well? I mean, because you're a brewer as well as a maltster. Um, I'm going to come by and try not to be in the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're t- oh, you're starting tomorrow. Yeah, right? yeah, we're doing it yeah, tomorrow morning. Yeah. So today... A classic collab where, uh, you know, stand in the corner until it's time to throw a bucket of hops in and <laughs> yeah. take a photo take of a social photo. media, right? <laughs> Hang I, out. I, I've done that a few times myself. Or like, yeah. here, here's a picture of me raking out. <laughs> yes. And mucking it out. Oh, right. There's yeah, right the, on. you know, making the, the visiting collaborator grain out and up and the thing. So <laughs> I, might, I, I mean, that is certainly a job to do there, for sure. Yeah. So then, when so when that, when's that beer going to be ready? And what is the, I shouldn't say, it's not the, pur- what the, what's the purpose, but like, what's the premise of this collaboration? It's going to be ready. It's going to be released um, at, Outside lands. Okay, so it is for the outside mm-hmm. lands. Then. Yeah, okay, I'm specifically cool. for that. And if you don't know what outside lands is, outside lands is an incredible, huge. Uh, people think of it as a music festival. Of course, I think of it as a beer and food festival as well. <laughs> it has to have music. Many, yeah. Yeah. Chocolate. Yeah, yeah there's, there's music around. There's like seven seven stages, I believe. Seven stages. I think if you include the smaller ones, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and comedy, and there 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 used to be chocolate lands, but there's wine lands and beer lands oh, and. Yeah. The gastro magic, where there's chefs, uh, you know, you know, cooking and cutting up things while there's bands going, or I mean, all kinds of there's stuff. It's really, really cool. Something for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> pretty uh, much a feast for all the senses. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is, and it's in Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, which is beautiful. I mean, it's amazing. So you've been curating the beer list for Outside Lands for this great festival. I mean, I've seen Paul McCartney there, mm-hmm. Metallica, Neil Young, uh, Stevie Wonder, Tom Petty. Um, Tom Morello, mm-hmm. and then also discovered a bunch of new smaller bands as well. So that's been that's been a really. Uh, I, I would definitely you know it's an all day experience. Bring your comfortable shoes. Don't bring shoes you you want to worry about ruining. <laughs> <laughs> and go have a, it's a fantastic beer. festival yeah, for sure. It's really cool. And I, yeah, I you know I was I, I attended it every year before I got oh. the gig of doing the beer for Beerland. So I know it as 
I, I would still be going even if I wasn't doing the beer lands. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. About 12 years you were doing now? Beer lands is now 12. It is 12. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Okay. Uh, actually, no, well, it's 11, but there was, I guess there have been 11 beer lands. There was one year where there was no festival during COVID. Right. So um, it's minus one year for that. The you always have the, mi- the COVID math. Now you have to subtract. Right. Yeah. Two the for that never happened. Right, exactly. In the before but, times. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Uh, but there were four years of outside lands before beer lands came along. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I've been doing it the whole time. Have you gotten to meet any like anybody really cool that you were pretty excited about? Because you must also curate the beer for backstage. Um, not so much. I mean, here and there, I, they, there are sort of satellite requests for beer for mm-hmm. other areas, for maybe sometimes for VIP or something Some like British that. British beer for Paul McCartney. That didn't come up. That would have been good, though. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, th- I do think just from stuff I've seen from the PR team and whatnot, I mean, th- the artists do come by Beerlands. Um, yeah. I haven't met that many people, but... The, you know, I think Beerlands is, in, is engaged is engaging enough that um, even you know the artists also come and check it out. And, yeah, uh, it's a it's a become a pretty cool feature. I remember of going to the first one and I was so excited. And I was like, Beerlands, yes. <laughs> yeah, right the the selection got a lot bigger when right. Beerlands came along. Right. So then, are you going to be so, doing the beer also at the new West County Pub? I'm sorry? Are, you, are you going to be serving that the the that beer, oh, outside yes. beer at the West County Pub? Yeah, as well? I think. Uh, I have it set to do uh, ten barrels of beer, and not all ten of those are going to be going to to the the festival. So I think it's going to be popular. <laughs> I yeah, I, I, I assume it's going to be uh, a, a decent amount of it, but we're doing a bigger boat. Over, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it you know I think the reason to, that we had landed on California Common or Steam is because to try to highlight that the San Francisco ness of mm-hmm. the festival yeah. and this sort of you know because the like you said it's not just music it's you know everything that happens there is sort of curated with a, a heavy local bent mm-hmm. right you know so the food especially is is, uh, many, is all great local bay area restaurants and, area, everything um, from high end to to almost street food but yes, it's all but, bay area but it's restaurants yeah. that people know from outside the festival it's not festival but, food yes, it's, right. it's yeah. real like restaurant as, food like, like Adelina's yeah. Malaysian yeah, sure. food she's yeah. amazing you can go see her in the tender mm-hmm. line at her restaurant there she's yeah. absolutely one of my favorite restaurants and favorite people as well for in the restaurant but i've seen like rich table there and oh yeah i so mean all kinds really, of stuff yeah yeah, yeah it's really sandy's really muffaletta was one i discovered oh, last yes. year that now they have a shop on i miss Street, the frickles but... though oh yeah the frickles. <laughs> frickles yeah oh, frickles. back in the day yeah. but um but yeah so you know i've just always tried to keep that in mind on the beer side like just the, the template is there like mm-hmm. the spirit of the festival seems to be to really highlight its mm-hmm. sense of place in Golden Gate Park and San Francisco and yeah. bring in Bay Area restaurants so I've just tried to always focus on finding Bay Area breweries that, that sort of fit that bill and yeah. then to d- collaborate with one on a sort of beer that's maybe the San Francisco beer style yeah, that's made a ton yeah. of sense yeah. the California style for a California festival and a What's it be local, called? local beer and uh, the, the beer is going to be called um Pre-quake vapor wave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that I was not guessing. I was thinking outside lands, but okay. Pre-quake vapor, vapor wave. Mm-hmm. Love it. Right. I don't think I heard of that yet. Yeah. Or if I did, I missed it. Will it be canned as well, or just draft? It's going to be draft only. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the uh, one of the things about the pub is that we don't have any um, outside of kegging. There's mm-hmm. no um, packaging there. Okay. So the only way to get it is by going there or by picking up a growler. But from if I if my tell me if my understanding is wrong, all of your beers at the new West County Pub that Hen House is doing it's in the old Iron Spring spot for those who don't know it is, um, yeah. over in Fairfax um, in Marin County, which is like on the way to like San Anselmo, right? Mm-hmm. You go through San Rafael, and then you just keep going deeper, deeper, deeper. Yeah, you just west. Head and, west. Yeah, head west, exactly. <laughs> keep Great going up to Francis Drake. Yes. Yeah. If you hit the ocean, you've gone too far. Yeah. <laughs> Turn around. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you're going to be doing all Admiral Malt there for the most part? We're, we're going to be doing a, a fair amount of Admiral Malt, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all small production just going to be there at West County then or so we have a we we're going to be having um I want to say 19 beers on tap um nice ideally like ma- yeah max um and half of that is going to be coming from the production production facility up in Santa Rosa okay um and then the other half is going to be produced there mm-hmm. um and Sold not exclusively, but primarily there. Okay. Now, for those who also don't know that, so Hen House is in 
Santa Rosa, a big production facility, but you can also go tasting there. Uh, um, there's the Palace of Barrels in Petaluma, mm-hmm. across from Lagunitas, from their big facility. Now there's going to be the West County Pub, and I believe you're opening up one in Nevada yes. soon, too, yeah, also as well? Yeah, mm-hmm. What's that one going to be called? Uh, honestly, I'm not sure. I, I'm sure they'll come up with something clever. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's been a lot of work on it, especially with, you know over the past couple of years, but... Um, I, I haven't been down there to, to check it out yet. Nevada, I know that they they needs e, yeah more fun. Well, I know that now now that uh, Fairfax is open, that um, the focus has been shifted down there, and so it should be open relatively soon. That's good. So yeah. then also you have a a woman chef mm-hmm. which for I mean it's, I I know that sounds more like point out woman chef, but for me that's. Pretty exciting. Yeah. And what's her name? Lauren. Lauren. What's her last name? <laughs> Brain fart. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> we'll put that on. We'll put that up yeah. there. I I did know it as well too, but that's okay. Okay. Let's have another beer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so she. Where did she come from? She was out at. I think the William Tell House. Will, yeah, she was uh, at William Tell House. Okay. Yeah. Um, at Marshall, yeah. right? Is that Marshall? Mm, no, I think Point it's Tamales. T- yeah, Tamales. Tamales. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and a, a number of other places. I mean, she's she's right along right door. along the coast. Yeah, if you don't Slander know door. that yeah. whole area there, it goes like Point Reyes. All that is beautiful area. Great spot to go down and you know meander along the coast, have oysters, and then come in, and then and you're going to have great food there. So that's a great way to oh, finish yeah. out. Yeah. Oh yeah, the f- food is food is fantastic. She's been doing amazing work there. So food um, fans. Uh, yeah, we're actually, um, we just started having live music there uh, tonight, tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, nice. yeah we're, we're trying to get uh, three nights of music every week. Inside or out in the parklet? Uh, I think seen... out on the parklet right now, and yeah. then we're working on getting some kind of like a, a stage platform kind of thing set up. Nice. Yeah. That is definitely a music town, that whole mm-hmm. area down there. It sure is. Yeah, you've got some like you've got the Sweetwater and um, Perry's. Perry's, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've, I've Paper squished, Mill out uh, in uh, San actually, Geronimo. I've actually never been there. Paper Mill Creek Saloon. Okay, it's a good one. Put that on my list as well. Old kind of old style roadhouse with great music. That's fun. Yeah. That sounds right up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people have been asking for for live music. That's that's one of the the two questions that we got all the time as we were trying to open. Is when were we opening? And is there going to be live music? Yeah, because right. Iron Springs was known also for yeah, you know, a, lot, a lot of music as well. So that that should that should be good because those folks they they like to dance out oh, there. Oh yeah. So what else would you want folks to know both about what you're doing uh, together, collaborations, what you have coming up? Um, well, I mean, I think uh, one of the obviously I'm biased, but one of the coolest <laughs> things about the concept for the the brewing program at Fairfax at the Fairfax Pub is. Uh, that you guys are getting craft malt certified. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, we, oh. are, we are craft malt, craft malt certified. What um, does that mean? Uh, th- to be craft malt certified, you have to be in partnership with a um, with a uh, maltster in I forget it. I forget what exactly it's called. Just like a c- certified maltster. Yeah, a, me- a member. Uh, it's, it's, it's the craft malt there used to be Napster, so now there's sort of like <laughs> malt. Well, okay. that, Maltster's <laughs> one of those great old British words that I love, like cheesemonger, maltster, yeah. uh, you know. Fishmonger. But, right. right. But, uh, yeah, so, the, you know, we have this uh, national, you know, nonprofit trade group that kind of like the Brewers Association for mm-hmm. Breweries, but mm-hmm. for us it's the Craft Maltsters Guild. And is they that have an this, American one or is that worldwide? Uh, it's it's. Primarily American, but it includes a number of Canadian malt houses and also like Great some, Western. Are they still around? Well, no, they're well, they are, but they're much too big to be yeah. a part oh, okay. of the crowd. There's a size limit uh, okay. for the amount of annual malt. Size matters. Yes, sorry, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but there are <laughs> worldwide members of the Craft Malter Guild, but it is, you know, I believe, mostly American. But so they oversee this craft malt certification program, mm-hmm. and that's to try to you know make it so that a brewery that supports craft malt uh, can get a little more out of their support through more marketing and just being listed as, and being recognized for supporting something like so, this. So you know, know <clears throat> there's like, I mean, an umbrella over it. You know when you go in, I mean, I guess there's distillers doing this as well. There are, there's, there's craft, uh, you know, that, certified that, distilleries. That, doing, yeah. that everything on the list, you don't even have, you don't have to go, is that, is that craft? Is that craft? Is that small? Where's well, that from? This, you know yeah. that it's all under an umbrella of some... It doesn't have to be... Ex- you don't have to use all 
It, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent, but yeah. you have to you you know you have to commit to using a certain percentage of malt of craft malt in your brewing program a year to get this certification. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it doesn't have to be every single. You can get you can also get individual. This would be more for a packaging brewery that's sending mm-hmm. their beer farther afield, but you can get individual beers craft malt certified, right? Mm-hmm. And then a brewery can become a craft malt certified brewery. Yeah. Yeah, so That's Fairfax true. is, um, that is a craft malt certified brewery. So we're mm-hmm. using a, a certain percentage that's just going to be coming from, from Admiral. Um, okay. And then at the facility in Santa Rosa, mm-hmm. um, we have an individual brand, or mm, I think we're working on a couple, but there's one, our Oyster Stout. Mm-hmm. It has Delicious. been primarily Admiral as far back as I can remember. Yeah. Um, and so without even knowing it, that was craft malt certified we just had to put in paperwork for it right. what type of malt are you doing in that just out of curiosity because that you know you know that's mark carpenter that was the head brewer for anchor for so many years mm. that's like one of his top favorite beers in america his favorite beer in the uk is timothy taylor landlord mm. so i always bring him some of that back when i come back <laughs> that's, <laughs> but, that's one of my favorites also yeah but he but yeah it's cool that he yeah. the oyster stout is yeah he loves favorite. the awesome. oyster stout yeah, so so he actually mentioned it when we when we nice. did. yeah colin so so like tell us a little actually so let's go into hen house tell okay. us a little bit about about hen house so we like i just said where your locations are colin mcdonald yeah. mm-hmm. um he's your brew master he um, he's for, the the cf Oh, I believe, or C. He's a C. <laughs> he's, he's, a C. he's one of the C's. <laughs> yeah. Co-founder, right? Yeah, he, co-founder. he's a co-founder. Yeah, so there were there were three three co-founders uh, um, uh, initially, and there was um, uh, Colin McDonald and Shane Gopal and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when... See, at least we're not live. We can <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. It all in. I can look it up. And... Uh, <laughs> God, he's he's not with the company anymore, but um, I know I'm yeah, working as well. Totally spacing. It's okay. I know a lot of firemen who invested. I have a lot of firemen friends who actually invested <laughs> oh, sure. when they were getting started. So that's that's kind of cool. It was definitely a um, grassroots uh, community, you know, funded brewery as it's as it oh, got started. Yeah, certainly. And it's very small. It was it was started here in Petaluma, mm-hmm. um, just over on uh, Copeland Street. Um, I think at that point we were making two barrels at a time, <laughs> individual batches. I, I wasn't with the company at that point, but mm-hmm. I, I did go in and help out bottling. Back when oh, we were fine. doing bottles, 12-ounce bottle, bottles of uh, oyster stout, just doing them by hand, just one at a time. Um, well, thank goodness for the cans. Yeah, you can do some yeah. really cool labels. You guys always have like the like coolest, like the conspiracy theories and all those kind of um, the series that you that oh. you have. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's all the work of. Well, this isn't actually his work, but uh, Josh Staples does most of our most of our labels. Yeah, um, they're awesome. The Walrus is yeah. Paul, of course. I'm a Beatles fan. It's my favorite <laughs> one. So it's like it has chickens that look like the Beatles doing Abbey Road. Pretty funny. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I wanted to ask you also. Oh, so the Rake Pub that you have. I want to kind of set this up for everybody. So when you're at when you go to Admiral Malting, I'm a Navy brat. It's on the Alameda Naval Air Station base, um, the old base there, and it's in one of the airplane hangars, which is like I have to do, bring my father out there. He's actually out here visiting from Texas right now. He would get a kick out of this. Um, I, I meant to bring him in here for a minute, but they're off looking at antiques. So when you go into um, the base, for me, the first time I went, when I went to come visit Admiral Malting, it was so like overwhelming nostalgia for as I when I was a kid, my dad was stationed there a few times at the Alameda Naval Air Station, and when they were first closing the Naval Air Station, I was like really bummed. I was really sad about it, and then when Things like a malting facility and wineries and distilleries, uh, um, St. George's is out there with Hangar One and a few others. I was like, okay, this is these aren't bad substitutes <laughs> <laughs> for, okay. for the planes. But uh, yeah. then you, when you go in there, um, it's in a in a you know big hangar. They've got the floor malting facility where um, uh, hard to explain, but but it is like a big floor and they're you know germinating and they're raking it through and. It's warm and it's, it's it's tricking the grain into doing this. It's sprouting and you've got your kiln there and everything. Mm-hmm. But there's a pub called the Rake where you guys are doing great food and beers that are made with your malts, like a whole bunch of them from all over the place. I mean, that is like 
you walk in there, that's really seriously one of the best, probably one of the best pubs in the world. If, if you really, <laughs> if you go in there and you look at that list and you're like. That's high praise, but thank you. <laughs> the breweries that are in there, you're like Cellar Maker and of course Hen House and like all over the place. Um, you know, Almanac, which is right next door. You can go to Almanac mm-hmm. next to Amaro Maltine and go in there and have some of their sours and some of their other beers as well. I mean, that is a, a, is a great thing. I mean, that's. Just we're just grateful that the the reason those beers are there is because each of those breweries uses our malt. The, mm-hmm. Any beer that's on tap at the rake has to be made with Admiral, mm-hmm. uh, not one hundred percent. It can have other malts in there, but it has to be most should be mostly Admiral. Um, so yeah, I mean the beer list. We're, it's a funny kind of situation that we have. Um, it's probably particularly hard on our GM who curates the list because <laughs> it's, you, you can't just go out and say, I need the, I got a slot to fill for a West Coast IPA. You, it really, we're at the you mercy of... You just call of, the distributor and go, <laughs> Yeah, it's not like that. Yeah, we're at the mercy of whatever people happen to be brewing with our malt at that moment in time mm-hmm. or what, what they just brewed a few weeks ago that's now out and available. But, uh, you know, so sometimes the list gets a little heavy toward uh, loggers, which is awesome because there's a kind of a logger renaissance. There happening. is a there's logger a renaissance for sure. Other times it'll be a little more IPA heavy or, you know, so it's the, the list at the rake fluctuates in interesting ways because it, it just depends on what everybody's making with our malt. At that, any moment. That's what makes that it really so good. cool. And so exciting. It's like, you, you know, you go, Oh, they're, do- I didn't, Oh, they're doing that. And they're, they're from San Diego. They're from all over the place. So are you selling malt also outside of California? A little bit, uh, a little bit up into Oregon and Washington and occasionally to little pla- places farther afield. Um, I mean, we've sent some malt over to Maui Brewing and oh, nice. um, Arizona. <laughs> Did you personally take it to Hawaii? No, that <laughs> That's was, what I went to. Tra- tra- Charter a boat. And, yeah. <laughs> take, it, take it over to Garrett. No, we didn't, we didn't get to hand deliver that. But. I think you've got something in that really cool growler yeah, there. Yeah, so these, these are the, the new growlers that we have. The West uh, County for, Pop. For oh, nice. Fairfax. I don't yeah. know if you can see that, but that is super cool. I like that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And that, that is uh, uh, Josh's work for sure. That is neat. Um, Love it. But I need to get one of those. We we haven't done growlers for I'm going to let you pour because I will probably make a mess. Like, it's probably um, pre, pre-COVID, pre I think. Mm. Um, and, you know, for a number of reasons. But, but one, it was that, uh, you know, we can't guarantee the, the freshness of the beer that people are, are, are getting once they finally decide to open it or reopen it or, you know, they, they take it home, they put it in their fridge. They okay, the beauty of this video podcast is <laughs> it's my show, so I can take a picture whenever I want. <laughs> and I am wearing my nice. <laughs> nice. Um And so, you know, guaranteeing freshness was a, a big reason for not doing growlers for a very long time but now that we have the west county pub and we're not doing any packaging there this is the only way that you can take it home um, those are beautiful that's a great yeah I these are it. these are really all right great. i'm i'm grabbing um, it just takes a lot of education right it's yes at the at the point of sale telling the customer certainly drink this fresh which yeah. has always kind of been our thing like yeah. getting education to people about freshness about beer about raw materials about you know keeping things cold and, and drinking things and, you know, and, and styles as as you too like god can we you know well i'm really thrilled like we we're talking about like, loggers are having a renaissance and like could we like get up i mean i like hazy too, and you For guys sure. do killer hazy but <laughs> let's do some other stuff guys try something new yes, certainly what are we drinking um this is a beer that we made for uh fairfax fest hmm. Um, which was oh uh, the Fairfax uh, Music uh, Festival recently yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah was the, like two spent, weeks ago spent mm-hmm. both days at that all day all both days, days yes. yeah, yeah. did you yeah. go home no <laughs> oh my girlfriend lives <laughs> right about four blocks from Hen House so oh, oh yeah, so yeah, like you just go right into the stage and yeah. take a nap and um, start start all over <laughs> you're right uh, this is super clean this is like really easy drinking what style is this yeah so this is uh, just a, a West Coast Pale uh, made with 100 percent Admiral it's Gallagher's Best and Yellow Gold um, and I want to say it is... Is that yellow gold or YOLO? YOLO. Like you YOLO only gold. live once gold. Okay. YOLO like the county. YOLO county. Uh, <laughs> I, like, I, like where, I like mine. <laughs> I mean, that it also works that way. Yeah. Yes. It's got a double meaning. Uh, and it's uh, Cascade, Simcoe, and Comet. Just yes, this is great. Easy drinking. It's something that, you know, just ABV? walk around. The f- What's the alcohol? Uh, this is five... I want to say it's five, four, or five, mm. five. Did you go through a lot of it at the fest? Yeah, we we sent uh, eight barrels to the festival, and they are all gone. They all get nice. <laughs> oh, lucky us! This is yeah, clean, easy drinking. Mm, fresh. Yeah. All right, cheers. Oh. Salud, kampai. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Mm. It's one of the things that um, we're, I am in, in particular very excited about uh, with Fairfax is that we can do those kinds of things. Having small batches of beer specifically for festivals or for events or you know, uh, collaborations for, for things <clears throat> that we wouldn't normally be able to do um, at our production facility in Santa Rosa. Yeah, it's gotten I mean, pretty big, which is yeah, good. Yeah, which is but great. I, I'm glad for you guys. But it, it, you know, the, the schedule becomes very full of, of a lot of things that we need mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, things that we need to package and, and, and send out. But having Fairfax and just a 10-barrel system allows us to make more lagers, to make more um, obscure styles, or to um, do collaborations and things that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. I like the idea of research and development with bands. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're, you love, well, obviously you love music or you wouldn't be doing the outside. Let, how, how did that happen? How did that start anyway that you started doing the outside, carrying the outside lands? Gross. Because obviously, like, I, I mean, I know you, if anybody knows, you know, Magnolia and Dave McLean, Bit of a deadhead. <laughs> Guilty Love, as charged. Yeah. <laughs> Loves music. I think Tara, like like Tara Nuren, my friend from Forbes, like she's also a deadhead. She lived in San Francisco for a little while because of that. And uh, when she when she was younger, she lives in, in Jersey now. But you two were like kindred spirits right away. Uh, so what? Yeah, so how'd that happen? Well, it, I mean, it wasn't exactly my. I mean, like I said, I've been going down Side Land since the first one, mm-hmm. and um, and so big big fan of the festival. Um, just kind of through friends of friends, I, I knew one of the folks at uh, Superfly Presents, which is one of the two promoters that right. co-produces. It's another Planet Entertainment and mm-hmm. Superfly Presents. Superfly. And, um, <laughs> you know, they, uh, I just, those first couple years, um, there wasn't much of a craft, or there really wasn't a craft beer presence there. And I just kind of, I guess I, I was either in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong <laughs> time. But I, because I, you know, I, I. Isn't that a Dr. John song? I, I, very well. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um. I, you know, I, I asked a few times, like, what, you know, when are we going to get some, this festival's amazing. Like, when are we going to, you know, the only thing, you know what would make it more amazing? It's craft beer. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so then finally, um, you know, I think like four years in, um, they were like, well, you know, you've been bugging me for years about this. Why don't you do it? So <laughs> it got handed to me and I did it. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, I, I, I'll say right place at right time. Cause I'm yeah, really yeah. glad to have had this opportunity good, to do it. Good labor of love there. Yeah. I mean, well, it's like herding cats cause it's 28 breweries and as how many did you myself, start with? Uh, we started with half that size. Um, it started out over, um, cause I remember going to like a little, little square. Yeah. It started out over, uh, um, originally by the, uh, one of the smaller meadows by the, one of the smaller stages. And then mm-hmm. a couple years in, it moved over to the back of the polo field. You kind of, mm-hmm. at, by the opposite the main stage, which puts it right at the crossroads there. Like that's kind of where people are coming from all of the other stages on their way. And so like it catches people when they're going, like making their move from like this, I got to go to this stage now to see this right, band. Right. So they can always stop off and get a beer. But so it doubled that's a good. couple years in. And strategy. Uh, yeah, there's some strategy <laughs> there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, trying to coordinate you know, a two beers from each brewery at that volume, too. It's like it's usually a big ask for a lot of tiny breweries, you know, to be able to supply sure, yeah. 12, 16, 18 kegs sometimes per style. Um, and just trying to wrangle all that and trying to, you know. It's, how do they it's take which beers go backstage? And how do I get in on that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's above my pay grade. I don't I've only been backstage like there once, and that was when Neil Young was playing. Nice. That was a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's. It's great to have, I mean, there the, there's great beverages throughout there. Winelands is amazing too, right? I mean, Winelands, Winelands is, is I love Winelands. Amazing cider. They've got everything from super high end wines, and of course, you know, like my my, my friend Les Claypool and his wife Cheney, they have you know Claypool cellars in there. Yeah, and, and the, the cocktail. In, in more recent years, they've uh, they've amped up the cocktail, cocktail program, magic. and so they have yeah, you have cocktail uh, magic. You know, great bartenders mm-hmm. from some of the best bars in the city. Oh my god, the area. Trick Dog. And, yeah, and, and those, they're all yeah. coming up with kind of custom festival cocktails. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you don't drink beer, um, you're still not going to go thirsty yeah, there. Right, right. Yeah. 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 And then, speaking cocktails. of, actually, are you going to have other options as well? Are you going to have some ciders, wine, uh, at, at the, 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 the West County Pub? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we have, we have wine. We have uh, ciders. We're actually also working on um, uh, sodas and seltzers. Like and craft ones, then? Or what? Or like doing your own, or like just carrying, uh, or? Well, there's there's been a um, a push to make like 
uh, house root beer for a while. Uh, so that might be a thing. Sarsaparilla. Um, there's uh, also like seltzers. That's a uh, that's a thing that we've been uh, talking about, trying to f- figure out a program for that. Yeah, it's funny because I curate um, the beverage list for <laughs> Barrel Proof Lounge, the new comedy club in Santa Rosa, mm-hmm. and uh, which we sell a, a lot of uh, stuff with Admiral Malting, like Ad- Ola mm-hmm. Kaz has been a lot of Hen House and, as well. But I actually fought having hard kombucha, and I fought the seltzers, <laughs> and, they do, and they do well. Yeah, they do they super do, well. Yeah. They do well. They mm-hmm. do well. And I did a non-alcoholic list. I, um, speaking of, I mean, like, are you doing? Are people getting your malts for non-alcoholic beers yet? A couple breweries have have. I mean, so we might as well get it. good mm-hmm. malt for it, right? Come on, guys. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, no, we've sold malt to a couple of non, and including mm-hmm. um, you know locally Barrel Brothers. Mm-hmm. Oh, they, okay. have a, they have a pretty extensive non-alcoholic line in addition to the. And they just have their new pub that just opened up as well in Windsor. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so good for them. Yeah, so yeah, the, it, our Admiral Malt makes its way into some non-alcoholic beers too. I don't mm-hmm. know about seltzer so much, but. Good. Well, mm-hmm. when you, when are you going to start pouring the the spirits that are being with your? <laughs> <laughs> Is well, that in the works? That would be interesting. We have. Our, we have spirits at the rake now that are made with our malt. You do? Uh, yeah. Oh. We have about eight to ten whiskeys. Uh, and it's an ever-growing mm-hmm. selection. Um, yes, I am definitely taking my father there. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's yeah. a sailor. <laughs> it's, you know, the, because we're relatively young and you know, new to this, um, and whiskey takes time, yeah, so uh, we're only time. now starting to see... Re- bottlings and releases from things that have been put into barrel okay. a couple I, years ago, right? So I just wasn't sure what the licensing. But, um, oh, licensing and wise, we're good, you know. Okay. So we were just waiting for the product to show up. Like it's How it's kind of weird to sit on a liquor license that you can't really use because uh, <laughs> again, keeping to our rule of it's got to be made with Admiral. Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean, I think based on the number of distilleries that have bought our malt relative to the number that have released products now, I think that over the next like two years, we're going to see like a doubling or tripling of our spirit selection nice. because. That's fun. All these or That's all these cool. distilleries are starting to bottle this stuff. So yeah. yeah. I was just gonna ask you something also, and I totally spaced, but I'll figure it out. I mean, have a have a boiler maker, have a you know, a classic <laughs> all all admiral all boiler admiral boiler maker, <laughs> um, like a whiskey and an oyster stout or something. Like uh, that. That'd yeah, be, yeah. be like a battleship or something like that. You have to have a cool name for that. Like right. my dad would probably come up with something. He was in the Navy for twenty three years. So. Well, you can see the USS Hornet from our windows. You know. Oh, well, so. there you go. Yeah. 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 Maybe that's it. Maybe have a hornet. Have a Horn- hornet. Hornet is the new boiler maker. <laughs> have yes. a hornet. That yeah. sounds good to me. So Got a ring to it, yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys, I am so glad you guys came in, and I am honored that you. Um, I mean, if you guys, if you guys know beer, Dave McLean is a legend. I mean, you will be a legend, but he's already <laughs> a legend. That just means I'm old. No. <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, look at the stuff you've done. I just can't. And and you're working I with him, no the, the nicest things. guy on the planet, your your partner Ron. Like, who? I mean, I don't know too many people that are nicer than Ron Silverstein. Ron's pretty nice. Like, guy. He's a pretty sweet guy. But yeah. I'm getting, you know, not to sell Curtis short. He's also a really nice I guy. I don't think I I don't know him yet. So Curtis, if you're, I will have to come meet you. Curtis is also equally nice. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a good spot to go to, yeah. but um, go there. You can have some great food. Go to West County Pub. Mm-hmm. You can make the rounds. Come out to Sonoma County. Come stay. You can hit some of the places here that are, you know, you can go to Hen House in Santa Rosa and in Petaluma here. Go across the street over to Lagunitas. We've got a whole bunch of other breweries and pubs and bars and stuff here in Petaluma. Um, you know, you can stay here in Petaluma. Well, like, there's different cool hotels popping up here and there, like the Metro. I really, actually, I really mm-hmm. like that one. There's a new one being built right over here. And uh, go out to Alameda. Take the, can't take the ferry over there yet, huh? Too bad. Yeah, maybe not from here. You can, no. you can get there. I mean, we're there's a new, there was already a ferry terminal on the other side of the island. Mm-hmm. There was only like a 20, 30, 25 minute walk probably. But they just moved it. They, well, not moved it. They put a new ferry terminal closer to us. Oh. Uh, right by the Hornet, actually. Oh, cool. And that's like a 10 minute walk. So you can go get, So you can go to Alameda, get some history, get a great beer, go get lunch, go over to Almanac, go over to Faction. Yeah. Go to Faction for the sunset. <laughs> I would have to say that has... They, might, they probably win uh, as far as breweries go with views. Yeah, best you know? probably best view in America for for. I mean, the you view. watch the sunset over the Golden Gate. Yeah, and, and our friend Nicole Arnie is doing yeah. you know quality control over there. 
Uh, you can go to Spirits, uh, St. George's. St. George is there. Hang, yeah. Hanger One. Hanger One's leaving, yeah. but... Uh, they are leaving, okay. Yeah. And Rosenblum, I think, with the winery they left, just, too. They just closed recently. Yeah. But there are a couple other wineries over there. Um, mm-hmm. And Alameda itself has a great... Park Street has some great restaurants and some bookstores and all kinds of stuff there to do. Mm-hmm. So, anyway. Well, we are done for this episode. Episode 2. I'm going to run out of fingers eventually, but... Uh, let me know if you have any questions or what the, uh, kinds of topics you want to hear and come on out. And you can get a hold of any of us by looking on our uh, – I, I know people can go to b- websites, but to see up to date what's being poured, go to Hen House. Mm-hmm. Is it henhousebrewery.com? Mm-hmm. Admiralmaltings.com. And then you can find them on Instagram and all that kind of stuff as well, yep. too. So, And I'm your golf, golf Girl Travels. You can find me on Instagram as well. And this will be on YouTube and all your other sites pretty soon here after they edit it and make me look skinny. <laughs> all right? <laughs> but after I have another bit. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Thanks, you guys. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Welcome to the Live Explore podcast. If you like what you hear, please hit like and subscribe.